Welcome back to New Day. It's now time for our social block and this morning we are looking at Nkrumah and volunteerism. Um, it's National Volunteers Day coming up very soon and we want to look at some of the ideals that the former president stood for. Now this morning I have in the studio with me um, Elena Asari. Um, she's a team leader of the Ghana Volunteer Program, um, organizers of the National Volunteers Day and I also have um, Mrs. Lucy Enin. I hope I got that right. She I was Mrs. Miss. Miss Lucy Enin. <laughs> She was an MP between 1960 and 1966 during the Nkrumah era from the Bong Ahafu region. She's currently a retired citizen but very active in politics. She's a member of the Council of Elders of the Convention People's Party. Good morning and it's good to have you in the good studio. Good morning, morning, my it's dear. It's very nice to have you here. But I'll start with you, ma'am. Um, you were a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you end up in, in parliament in those I days? Know, uh, during independence time, you know, there were no women in parliament. So Nkrumah thought, and remember when Nkrumah started his campaigning, his supporters were mostly women because his ideas about free fuel, compulsory education, health care, there were no dangers in those days. Everything, how your children would go to school free, so it, it, it was campaigning for women. So he realized that without women, Parliament cannot move on. So he presented it to Parliament, and then it was approved, and then the, at that time, the Governor General signed it. So 10 women members were elected from every, from the region, and I represented Bon Afro region as a member of parliament, woman member of parliament for Brown. And there were only 10 women at the, the time? At that time. See, was volunteering very popular in your day? It was part and parcel of the government program. Not, it was a national affair. The chiefs, everybody got involved. So was it something that people did enthusiastically? Exactly. Was to do? I give you, I'll give you an example. My late uncle was the Bichim Hene, the, the paramount chief of Bichim. Elias Frank Henning. We wanted to put, if you wanted to build a clinic in your community, schools, the government will provide you with materials. And then we beat the gong gong. We said the one community day would come community together and, and they would build. Exactly and that was the spirit of volunteerism. Do you see that now? The Where is it? Of today? If there's, we have a can we be so engulfed with debt in Ghana? Filth. Who cares now? State of hopelessness in Ghana. Look at the filth. Why should we sit down and let the whole country be engulfed with filth? Who's responsible? All of us. And then the government has to take initiative. Nkoma was a visionary leader. If you don't have vision, you can't rule the country. You can't rule a country without vision. How can a country like Ghana sit down and they come out filth? Cholera. Cholera. Cholera is killing more than Ebola. Right. Now you were in parliament and in your day you said there were only about 10 women in parliament yes. at the time. The numbers still haven't increased. No. We are still, women are still very much underrepresented in, in parliament. What do you think is, is the cause of this? What can we do to increase the, the numbers? We just get in, we have to get involved. You see, people think uh, uh, politics is, you can't do with politics. Everybody has to be, uh, even the food you eat is politics. <laughs> if they introduce GMO food to you, it's politics. Uh, everything is politics. So you have to be interested. And then, and so that's women have to take that initiative. Exactly. We have to take that step. You we don't, have to be see, involved. We have to be very active. You How was to. Parliament like back in the day for you? Oh. Was it as acrimonious as, as we see now in they, nature? We were building the nation. Let me give you a short history. When I, we, I, we elected to Parliament, first of all, we were sent on delegation, different delegation, for, to both East and West. That was during the Cold War. So I was a member of the delegation to the Eastern Bloc. You know, the Eastern Bloc, that is Eastern Europe, there were no Africans at that time. So we were the first parliamentary delegation through there. We went there to observe what they were doing. The setup of uh, factories, when Nkrumah had in mind to set up his state enterprises. That is his vision for Ghana. After attaining independence for Ghana, let me read you something. He said, excuse me, just a minute. 
we have won the political battle and we have now plunged ourselves into the fight for economic and social reconstruction of our country. And I wish to make it quite clear that this fight is to tougher and far more difficult than many of us do realize. It is not so only because the enemy is intangible, invisible, and impersonal, but also and mainly because we must fight on several fronts. Listen to this. Imperialism and colonialism die hard. And what they fail to achieve in one form, they try in another. We must therefore be on a constant and vigilant guard against any form of subtle domination by whosoever and whatsoever. So you, 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 you are not happy with the current state of the country? How do you feel about us going to the IMF for a bailout? For what? Let me give you another. When a champion, I, I don't appreciate military government, but when the later champion's government came, he was facing the same difficulties. They already the started dismantling state enterprises. So he wanted money. And then he realized that he had to go to uh, the World Bank. Then he said, we have to do Operation Feed Yourself. So we're not going to borrow money. Operation Feed Yourself. If I'm able to feed my people, it's a plus. A hungry man is an angry man. man. Okay, let me come to Eleanor for a little bit now. Now, you are here on behalf of the um, National Volunteers. Uh, you are part of the organizers of the National Volunteers Day. Yeah. Mommy here doesn't feel as if the spirit of volunteerism is in the U today or is in the country today. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think the spirit of volunteerism has really died down. Um, because of modernism, we all look out for ourselves oh, yes. rather than looking out for our neighbors and all. But, you know, the other thing too is that we as a people, we have lost, we lost that from like the beginning of time after increments era. And what we need to do as a people is to inculcate some of these things into our uh, academic systems. Such as? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, we have the Girls Guide. Girls and Guide, the, Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And it has died down. So we have to start uh, bringing up some of these uh, groups in schools, in our universities, so that we can have... Do you also feel that maybe the current state of um, the nation is also not helping people to want to be involved in such acts? I mean, if I can't pay my electricity bill or I can't afford to buy fuel in my car, why would I... I mean, I'm thinking of how to get my next meal. Why would I want to go out and volunteer for something and help somebody do something? Okay, it's because of this mentality that we are here today. <laughs> because if we have started that then, I don't think that uh, looking out for yourself every time is the solution because if you don't have food to eat today and someone else has it and you are doing something that encourages the person to also give you food the next day so are we sort of looking for rewards for our acts is that what you're saying no we, we are not looking we be rewarded for, for volunteering no, no we shouldn't be rewarded for volunteering but i say that volunteering comes with a lot of benefits even though you don't ask for it at the end of the day you are going to receive it right. that's what i think um, what activities do you have lined out for this year? Okay, so this year, um, National Volunteers Day, it happens to be on a Sunday, but we are encouraging uh, people to start the activities somewhere from the 20th to the 22nd, which is like a, a weekend. Now, we have uh, several activities across the country. Somewhere in Tamale, we have uh, the Comfort uh, alumni. They are painting um, Nohini, a children's orphanage so you can if you're in tamale you can join them there somewhere where we're exactly in, in tamale no no hini no hini that's the yes, name of the, that's the, the town name of, yeah, yeah okay. that's where and um, in kumasi you can go to kath and donate blood and there's also a cleanup exercise in accra there are a lot of things uh we are painting a school in pram pram the community development vocational and technical institute now with that school uh, what got our attention is that uh, some years back the school used to sit about 300 students but looking at the environment of the school um, enrollment has dropped so there are about 55 students in the school now which is like terrible because we need people to be in school to um, learn about a vocation or technical training or something of the sort right. yeah so we are doing that to help that community right. uh, we are um, there's another uh, reading clinic in Legon mm. the adjust park mm. so if you have time you can go through that there are a lot of um, activities activities that but I can I can't mention Everything. all so you can go to bit 
dot l i slash mv day 14 bit.ly slash mvday14 you're going to see all the activities across the nation and, and then you, you can, can choose, choose which to, one you want yeah, to participate which one you want okay to you spoke about the reading culture mm -hmm. i mean let me come to you you are not too happy about the the reading culture of the youth today yeah i'm not happy at all somebody wanted to uh, uh, have interview with me about uh, au he said the relevance they said i asked him whether he has read Africa must unite, written by Osage Fodor. Said, no. Then I'm not going to have an, an interview with you because you have not read that book. How can you come and have an interview with me? We are not reading. And fortunately enough, he's the only president in the world who has written more books, um, more than 20 books. Why can't we read the, this vision? Why do you think we are not reading? Why are you not? It's all part of neocolonialism. When Krumah talk about neocolonialism, that's what he meant by suppressing you, thinking that uh, you are in Syria. So, if let's so who is keeping us from reading? You see, we need to. Um, that's what the uh, uh, the lady was saying about your uh, guy, guy. We he established young pioneer movement. That is the way African children should think and move and act. If we had continued this young pioneer movement, all these things wouldn't have been because they were training the African to have this confidence, self-reliance on yourself, believe in yourself as an African. Right. Okay. Yeah. We're almost out of time. Let me quickly ask you. Now, you are very, very sad. Before we started this interview, you're telling me about the current state of affairs in the country. Yeah. How do you think we got here and how do you think we can get out of it? You are not for the IMF bailout. So, uh, which ways do you think that we can get out of the current state we are in? We, let, we need people who, are, who have sense of patriotism. And we have to cut our coat according to our cloth. Why do you have 275 people in parliament for what? And this country, this small country like Ghana, Netherlands, a country like, how many MPs do they have? If I tell you, I was representing the whole of Burahafo region, and uh, I know every village in Burahafo. So, what's so why do we need why should you do Why should you spend ministries? Why do you have to have so many ministries for what? So, we need to cut down oh the my God, the We need to cut house. our coat according to our cloth. And we have to be realistic. Nkrumah gave us all these things. This, what things did he give us? All these things that I have. W what are they? Look, Akoso Mbotema wasn't there. Nkrumah built Tema. There was no, th 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 there was no Akoso Mbotema. All these, all these things. Things of everything that Nkrumah did. Yes. Why can't we continue? All the all collapsed. All collapsed for what? And then we go to China to buy toothpick. Isn't it an insult? It is very shameful. Now, mm. how was the event last year? How was the turnout? Okay, so last year... In we terms had, of numbers. Yeah, last year we had um, 40 registered activities. Uh, we had over 300 people going to... Uh, Are you happy with that number? Or are you looking to increase Well, that it was the beginning. So, um, we appreciated it. Mm. And so, this year we want to... Um, at least we want thousand people to join the activities this year okay. and we are calling what about on the age group what which age group do you usually have volunteering is yeah. it more the youth or you have older people as no well? it's more the youth, the youth. Uh, you know the older people are a bit uh, lax about this issue and so we are hoping that they would also come up and be an example to us so we're calling on everyone Everybody in ghana to join to hands there and yes. volunteer if you cannot volunteer your time and you think that you can support right. with um logistics go out there and do it it's another form of volunteering. right and i must add that gov you're not being supported by government at all, all, at all. by yourself yeah. right thank you very much for your time this morning this has been the social blog and my guests have been um auntie lucy any she was an mp between 1960 and 1966 for the bonga Hafu region she's currently a retired citizen but very very active with politics and she's a member of the council of elders of the convention people's party and i also had elena asante who's the team leader for the ghana volunteer program uh, organizers of national volunteers day and we've been